Hi everyone, Dr. Simon Friedrich here, consultant in clinical neurophysiology. Welcome back to the channel. Lovely to see you. Please do support the channel by hitting that subscribe button below. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a particular subject in epilepsy, which is the epilepsy research gap. Now, worldwide, uh, we know that approximately 50 million people are living with epilepsy, and that's with research work done by the World Health organization. Approximately 85% of those people are living in developing countries where they may not have access to the best um, investigations, the best treatments and so on. And approximately half of that number are actually in that category of not being given adequate anti-epileptic medications and adequate follow-up, etc. So in terms of a global um, health issue, epilepsy is certainly up there. In fact, if we have a look at other similar neurological conditions, um, we can actually see from the World Health Organization that um, really epilepsy is one of those conditions which is uh, very high up there in terms of its prevalence. Um, if we compare it to, for example, uh, Alzheimer's and dementias, um, so they have roughly about um, about 35 to 40 uh, million people who are affected uh, by that and uh, you know certainly there are quite a few more in the epilepsy group if we compare that to Parkinson's disease uh, for another example we're talking probably in the area of about six uh, million or so or multiple sclerosis in the ballpark of about three million. In fact the World Health Organization has um, certainly talked about the epilepsy treatment gap in uh, no uncertain terms that this is a point where we really have to focus our energies on. However, something that really struck me uh, when I was doing my own uh, research into this is in fact the paucity, relatively speaking, of research into epilepsy. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in terms of the epilepsy research gap. Now, I'm not the first person to have uh, Notice this, um, the World Health Organization in a follow-up paper recently, um, Epilepsy, a Public Health Imperative, um, has a particular chapter, chapter seven, dedicated to this uh, epilepsy research gap. And what they have done is something that any of us would do if you're trying to research something, is we go online and we use certain uh, searching tools to identify what research is out there. Now, in medical terms, a very good starting point is a, a research engine um, called PubMed. And if you type in epilepsy or seizures, you actually start to get a sense of how many publications there are relating to those search terms. So what that I did and what in fact what they did was have a look at exactly that uh, from the World Health Organization. And they saw exactly how many people um, have been publishing papers on this. And you can do this uh, and you can see exactly which years uh, papers have been published from and where they've been published from. And it's really, really fascinating. So the first thing I want to do is just show you a little chart which shows you exactly when the journal um, publications have started here. And that was roughly in the uh, 1780s. Uh, for epilepsy and in fact the first medical journal only really appeared in 1731 or thereabouts so um, really in terms of the dawn of epilepsy uh, journal content it's very much been there since pretty much the beginning and if you have a look through it's been there virtually continuously ever since. Certainly the numbers of uh, papers relating to epilepsy have ramped up uh, dramatically really the start of that has been from the uh, late uh, rather mid to late 1940s um, and then it's really sort of exponentially grown upwards as you can see here on this graph. Now um, if you type in epilepsy or seizure which is what they did for the World Health Organization um, then in fact you'll see roughly there's been in the last year um, or at least 2019 because obviously there's been a bit of a drop off this year um, there have been about 11 and a half thousand uh, papers and in of itself that sounds uh, jolly good. Is that enough? That's the question. Is 11,500 papers published in 2019 sufficient um, as a marker of where research is currently at? So in order to do that, let's compare it to some other neurological conditions. Um, and I've already alluded to some from the World Health Organization list. So um, what we've 
seen here on this chart is you can see similarly if you type in search terms for um, epilepsy or seizure uh, comparing that with Parkinson's or brain tumor uh, or MS or autism or dementia you can see the volume of publications uh, which are out there and if we look at this chart uh, by far and away you can see that the dementia ones have really skyrocketed upwards um, and uh, those are about 15,000 in the last year um, and then that's followed by brain tumours, obviously a very important uh, problem, and then epilepsy or seizures over there, followed by Parkinson's. MS is uh, sort of lower down um, at about, uh, well, just shy of about 6,000, and then autism and uh, dementia um, towards the uh, bottom, and autism towards the bottom. So in terms of where publications are on first glance you would think actually that's not bad that's that, that's quite a good um, place to be really however um, if you take the term epilepsy or seizures and you put those into a search engine those two um, results are actually quite interlinked and there's a heavy overlap between the two so you'll have plenty of articles which will have epilepsy and seizure in the same journal article and same uh, search uh, search words for referencing so in fact what can actually happen is you can actually end up underestimating the number of papers that are there because you can almost virtually double up um, the number of papers that you might think of that so in fact what i did was to try and counteract that when i did my search in fact what i've done is now search for epilepsy or seizure and then subtract it out when using a not command epilepsy and seizure so that actually uh, far uh, greatly reduces the number of publications it almost halves it and in fact if you just compare the uh, charts you can see they are the same shape and that's because they're almost synonymous of course you will get some research papers which will talk about seizures only um, you know if you do some experiment and give uh, I don't know a fish some sort of a medication you might induce a seizure in said fish you wouldn't necessarily call it epilepsy and so the word epilepsy wouldn't necessarily feature in that particular type of journal or uh, article so um, they're not entirely synonymous, but most of the time they are pretty much there. So um, you can see there's actually quite a key change in terms of the volume of publications here. It's actually far less than even the WHO perhaps uh, had anticipated. And if we have a look again now um, at this comparison between um, the different conditions that I've mentioned, then actually we start to see a very different picture. Of course, um, you know, there's been no change there in terms of the dementia or in terms of the uh, brain tumors, which are you know up there. But actually now epilepsy is now beneath Parkinson's and uh, only somewhat above MS and autism. So all in all perhaps and I'm not saying that one condition is more important than any other condition um, obviously anyone who's being affected uh, by any of these conditions will have their life significantly impaired but in terms of where epilepsy is um, it's perhaps not where it should be and we know that epilepsy is one of the most prevalent uh, neurological health conditions out in the world now let's have a, a little think now instead of globally i'm going to zoom in on the uk now um, in terms of publications publications tend to be made and research tends to be funded by more developed countries countries with higher incomes so if we were to take the situation in the uk so if, let's say i was a, a uk funding body um i would look to see uh where um the particular health issues are in my own country in order to try and uh, dish out uh, funding grants etc and research opportunities um, proportional to the impact or the necessity or the requirements of said health issue so if we were to take a look at the UK numbers and these are taken from the uh, neurological alliance so these are data I think from um, uh, 2017 it's published just now in 2019 
Um, so for MS, you can actually see that's actually uh, 91,000 people um, in the UK who have this. Parkinson's, 122,000. Brain tumors, 210. Epilepsy, 526,000. Autism, 580,000. Dementia, 760,000. Um, you can actually see already you know, the um, burden of where these health issues lie um, are a little bit clearer now, perhaps, than where some of these research publications are coming from. Because, of course, research publications globally are probably more reflective of what's happening in more developed higher income nations. And so we can see if we just put this relatively um, to uh, the numbers of epilepsy as a, a different way of presenting this, then you can actually see that there's about 44% more people living with dementia than people living with epilepsy, um, about 40% only, uh, relatively 40% of people with uh, brain tumours uh, relative to those with epilepsy, 17% in terms of MS. So what we can then do is, um, so I've plotted over here the uh, on this chart, we've got the numbers of patients who are affected, which are in the blue bars, and the line is the numbers of uh, papers relative to the population um, from the latest numbers of population and the 2019 papers. And you can now start to see the disparity here of where epilepsy lies compared to conditions such as MS, Parkinson's and brain tumours, where there's something like four or five fold numbers of publications relative to people who have those conditions uh, compared to people who have um, obviously epilepsy. There's a little bit more in terms of autism and dementia, but actually, you know, when you look at this, there's quite a heavy slant towards MS, Parkinson's and brain tumours. Of course, these are important conditions and certainly we celebrate all research um, and all funding that goes in that direction. But just to give you a sense of where epilepsy is relative to all those others. So epilepsy here is actually um, in almost the least. We can do a similar exercise, in fact, um, with the United States, and we find a very similar picture over here. So relative to the population who are affected, um, the number of journal articles being uh, produced in 2019, um, again, follows a similar pattern, although there seems to be more of a slant in terms of brain tumours for that particular population of the US uh, than, than um, in the UK. Um, but a very similar pattern appears. What we can do instead of looking at populations, well, perhaps there are different ways of measuring the impact of disease. So instead of the numbers of people are affected, perhaps there are measures which look at the um, amount of effect that it is having on people. And there's always a, a measure for different things. And there's always uh, you know, criticisms of one way or another. But this particular measure it seems to be quite a, a an important measure, it's called a DALI. You can see more information on what a DALI means, but basically um, it refers to a lost year of healthy life, and that takes into account life expectancy um, and also the level of disability as well. And so it's a unique combination of, of everything, really. And you can do a very similar plot. And this is now globally, so this is not um, against a particular country. So if you look at the global DALIs, um, and I've list of them um, over here. These have all been worked out. Um, and um, you can see a very similar picture here, although it's even more marked now for uh, MS, Parkinson's, brain tumours, that there is a really heavy slant uh, towards research publications in those directions, certainly compared to epilepsy. Um, and if you were to take into account now where all those research publications are happening, um, if you recall the chart that I showed you, all those uh, publications on dementia uh, being so much higher than all those other conditions. Actually, relatively speaking, even dementia is almost certainly being under researched. So all these conditions are important, but I just want to show you where epilepsy is in terms of research relative to populations affected and also to DALI's the impact on healthy years of life. Let's have a look now at funding. So the 
NIH, the National Institutes of Health, is this absolutely massive funding body in the United States. Um, and they have a pot which they dish out annually of over 40 billion dollars, which is just staggering money. Um, and you can see here, and this is uh, data that the WHO collated, is that epilepsy is actually a relatively poor relation of other conditions such as dementia, um, neurologically, uh, or stroke even, or even autism as well. So um, in terms of funding going in, it's the least of those on this particular chart. In terms of um, research relative to population, relative to impact on health, um, again, it's the poor relation. So really uh, what we can only conclude from this, and this is the WHO's conclusion, is that actually there is a massive research gap here in epilepsy, which really needs to be addressed. Now, this isn't just something which is pertinent to uh, developed countries. Um, we also need to start thinking in terms of developing countries as well, where they're at. Obviously, they have a huge population out there um, that need to have their health improved uh, and benefited from. And certainly, um, you know, much more research needs to be happening out over there as well in order to try and get the best um, health interventions possible to those populations. If you don't know what's going on locally, then actually how on earth do you treat it? And so this is really um, where the WHO have now sort of focused quite a few of their efforts is in trying to improve this mismatch between um, the health implications and health uh, impairments relating to epilepsy and where we need to be going and what we need to be doing to improving our research, to be improving the treatments and investigations that we can provide and uh, you know, try and get those two together, much in the same way that there have been improvements in funding for other important neurological conditions, be it Alzheimer's, dementias, etc., which are certainly very much a very important increasing uh, cause of concern, certainly in developed countries where there are people of older age groups, it may be less of an impact globally um, because of people having younger uh, populations in, in develop, developing countries. But but actually, you know, in terms of you know what we need to be doing for epilepsy, we need to be doing an awful lot more. So I just thought I'd talk about that with you, share that with you. Uh, this November, this is now um, Epilepsy Awareness Month. We all need to be doing our bit. Um, and um, I hope that's kickstarted perhaps some thoughts uh, for all of you um, in terms of you know what we can all be thinking about to try and support research, support um, activities uh, for whichever epilepsy support groups are out there to help improve health outcomes for everyone, whether it's uh, locally, nationally or internationally. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope that's been informative. I know there's been lots of data in that, um, but that's what this channel is all about. Um, wishing you all the very best. Hope to see you in the next um, video in the near future. And uh, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe. All the very best and have a great day.